Hey, how's it going? Figured it's time for an update. Been making some big changes, some look changes, some power changes. Trying to get Tune figured out so we can get back the dyno yet again. And uh, hopefully get things figured out to where we can make a full pull under full boost to full RPM. It should sing to 10,000 RPM. We're about to find out. So let's check out some of these changes. One of the biggies from the get-go was the fact that I had a boost leak here at the blow-off valve. The blow-off valve is a 40. It came with an aluminum mount because this is an aluminum. It came with an aluminum one. I added a steel one because this is a steel charge tube. It didn't line up very good. At first, I didn't think it, I thought it was going to be okay, but ended up there's an o-ring between the two the o-ring was not sealing it and it was leaking pretty good once again sealed all that up that's good to go carburetors couple changes on the pedo tubes pedo tubes come up from the bottom now they come in from the back flow comes up through here splits off goes to all four carburetors which provides the boost reference to the float bowls which pushes the fuel up through the jets when the boost comes on and essentially at all times now because the system is totally sealed from atmosphere pressure except for what's coming in the turbo down there so everything idle air mixture air transfer air once it comes on to a main jet that air is all provided through this plenum in the turbo now it's pretty awesome fuel system still pretty much the same getting ready to change this petcock it now has a it's a petcock with a reserve and a close which i wanted to have but it doesn't flow enough fuel for the pump the return side is good but the feed side it's lacking just a little bit and not coming all the way onto pressure and i feel like if i just put a little more flow out of here everything will be good to go and it should be wiring's all finished now i have the kill switch pop that off engine dies instantly or you can push the button this button down here is actually for my ignition when I hit this button when I'm doing a burnout or when I'm on the two-step it pulls it back 10 degrees ignition the spark it pulls back timing 10 degrees when I hit that button which just makes it much safer under boost also which the safer we can be with this thing the better off we are <laughs> once again and <clears throat> The hob switch is now on top of the charge tank. It now also, when it sees it's tuned for about two pounds of boost, when it sees two pounds, it pulls back the ignition timing along with the switch up here. The switch is just so I can do it, just to make sure it's coming on. But also the hob switch, I wired it up to where now, when the hob switch turns on, the light for the boost gauge turns on. Before it just turned on with the key and everything turned on like normal. Now everything turns on, but the light for the boost gauge does not. When it comes on to boost, that's when the light comes on and uh, it makes me real happy. <laughs> Pretty simple stuff, but makes me real happy. Biggest change, bam, we finally got us a ferret. Look at that. Oh, I'm so happy about it. Of course, my people, we got a shout out. And of course, Sorry for the reflection there. Number 78. <laughs> She's ready to go. <clears throat> of course, everything's all good down here. Double checked it a couple times. Done boost reference. The, the wastegate actuator there. Everything is good to go. It's all been fully tested and pretty much blueprinted along with most of the parts of this engine now. Because we're at the point to where... We can't have any more problems. At this point, if we have problems and there's boost, especially six to ten pounds of boost, it goes into meltdown instantly. <laughs> It'll melt pistons like you wouldn't believe. I've torched quite a few in the past and they just go poof and then all the oil in your crankcase comes out through that piston and buddy, it's a smoke show. <laughs> Not good. <clears throat> So if y'all want to hear it, she's about ready to make some noise here. 
my neighborhood seems all nice and quiet, but I think we're about to wake everybody up. So you see now, key on, gauge turns on, the boost gauge is on, but the light does not light up. Yep. Come over here, get away from that exhaust down there. Hit my fuel pressure button here. This is the kill switch is now controls the headlight and the fuel pressure so I can turn it off at idle. So I'm gonna cycle it, get a little bit of fuel pressure. All right, we're good to go. And if you see up here, turns on also. All right, we're off. Gassed out in there. Got that new VP in it. It works good. Highly recommend the VP. I think this is 94 octane blend, no ethanol. It's hot. Good to go. See what happens here. Oh yeah, right back on. It's like a fuel injected. Boy, this thing sure makes me happy. We own it. It's about time to get this thing sending. Full send, full zoot, full boost. One more dyno hit, of course, trying to figure out the high end boost. It's still wanting to go a bit lean. Oh yeah, that's the other new item. It's tucked in down there, if you can see it. See the pink line? I can actually get to it while I'm on the bike, so it is fully adjustable. See, the pink line carries fuel over to the adjustable Vito's power jet. So now, once the boost comes on, Mr. Vito provides a good gulp of fuel in the intake plenum, right down there in the middle. So hopefully... Once the boost comes on, we can get that tuned in on the dyno with a nice heavy load. We're going to try and probably make a fourth year pull this time. I'm hoping for fourth year, about eight pounds, 8,000 RPM, maybe 9,000, we'll see. I think the, the box is currently set at 8,800, so 
may leave that alone and may just let it go. I'm, I'm ready to hear it. I want to, I want it. <laughs> it needs to happen soon. Alrighty. Thanks guys. Like, subscribe. Thank you very much. More to come.